As Lint is a powerful tool designed to keep your JavaScript code clean, error-free and consistent. Its value lies in the ability to enhance code quality, readability and maintainability. By catching errors early and promoting best product practices, As Lint can save your time and help maintain high standard in your JavaScript development. So welcome back, I'm Przemek and in this material I will discuss As Lint, the tool that ensures your JavaScript code remains consistent and clean. I will guide you through setting it up, customizing its behavior and integrating with Prettier and VS Code. So, let's get started! You can install and configure ASLint by running the following command that fires the setup process and prompts you with a few questions about the required config. We are developing a classic browser app using ASM modules, so maybe you might want to check our VIT setup guide. So we select those options and the tool will install the required packages and create a basic configurations file which looks like here. As you can see it imports a few libraries and the default recommended standard. We defined it in this line and below we set a custom config. How to use ASLint? By default, the tool applies its recommended rules to check the code for violations, so let's choose a few of these rules to break and see how the tool flags the issues. So we created this really simple code that looks like here and it breaks four rules. Three default ones from recommended standard and one that we added manually, so we're just checking the curly brace in our code. So now you can check the code for the violations by running the slint command and specifying the file or directory or a glob pattern to check. The first one checks the one file for the rule violations. The next one is an example of using the glob patterns, which selectively uh, chooses the JavaScript files that we want to lint. And the last one is without any arguments, which, as I said, links all the JavaScript files relative to the current directory. So as you can see, the tool correctly identifies the rule violations that we intentionally created. While most of the issues it finds in this case needs to be addressed manually, there is one that can be automatically fixed. To apply these automatic corrections and reduce your work, you can use a similar command as before, but also add the fix flag. So the tool has fixed this one out of fixable problems and now you need to address the rest of the issues manually. Once the corrections are made and you run the linter again, you should no longer see any problems. You can also add a script to the package.json to run as lint with all the linters together with a single command. That's a standard approach in our codebase. How to ignore the code in ASLint? You have several options for skipping the code checks in your project, which should of course be used with caution. If you want to ignore the entire directories, you can utilize the ignores key in your config file and specify them there. We don't want to check the output files and external code, so we exclude the dist vendor and node modules directories. If you need to handle more advanced scenarios, just check out the docs, because it is really flexible and it provides much more possibilities than this. You can also disable code checks for specific parts parts of your code using a common approach for linters which involves using comments. So for example, if we don't want the ASLint to check the specific code blocks, you can use the following commands which disable and enable the ASLint tool. You can also ignore the specific line from the check and you can ignore the next line. You can also specify the rule that should be skipped while using the ASLint by defining them after using the specific comment. So for example, in this scenario the tool will check all the rule violations without the no debugger rule. You can also create a specific configuration for a specific files. So for example, if we put the comment at the top of the specific files, we disable the rule that checks if the debugger is used in our code. In this case, if we run the ASLint, the tool will skip this one file. How to configure ASLint? To alter the tool's behavior, you should modify the aslint.config.js file created during the initial setup. I haven't delved into any advanced configurations yet, so I recommend exploring this on your own. But for me, the most I need is choosing the coding standard and adjusting rules, and that can be easily managed. So in this example, we use the default aslint recommended rules, which is defined here. Then we ignore a few directories, which has been described already, and we add the curly brace checks to our rule set because it is not included in the recommended rules by default. 
I'm talking about some JavaScript coding standard, but which of these are the best? The default config uses slint recommended rules, which serve as a good base, but I need something more. A few years ago, while exploring various JavaScript coding styles, I came across Airbnb style guide. However, I found it to be too much for my needs. Then I discovered the standard JS, which is also quite popular and seem more manageable. So in the project that I make, I've decided to adopt and test standard JS coding standard to see how it aligns with my coding requirements. If you are interested in this as well, start by installing the slint config standard package that adds support for its rules in the slint. Then configure it within the slint config.js file. I also recommend reading through all the rules it enforces and making any necessary adjustments to suit your specific needs. So for example, I found a few of the rules that I wish to change, so I've get their codes and configure the tool behavior. You might also wonder why I don't use the WordPress coding standards for JavaScript even though I primarily focus on custom WordPress development. I've already discussed this decision so I recommend checking the full material for a detailed explanation. Here I will leave you with a fun fact. WordPress coding standards are built on the top of the used by jQuery. And what about you? Which coding standard do you use in your code base while creating your JavaScript? Airbnb, standard JS, as me? Let me know in the comments, I will be really pleased to hear your thoughts. How to integrate Slint with VS Code? Slint offers an integration plugin and makes it incredibly easy to get started. Simply install the plugin and start using it. The tool will highlight any issues in your code that don't align with the selected rules. To fix issues, you can either run the fix script in the terminal or use the command shift p shortcut in VS Code. Type fix and select fix all the autofixable problems to automatically format the code. Additionally, you can configure Slint to format the code upon saving. However, be aware of potential conflicts with Prettier. What conflicts? You should know how to integrate Slint with Prettier, because the Slint checks formatting rules which can lead to conflicts with Prettier, another tool that we use in our system. What conflicts? Let's check out the following example. Prettier in our setup is configured to use double quotes, while Slint is set to enforce a single quote. When the code is formatted with Prettier, it converts all single quotes to the double ones. This action triggers Slint to flag these as uh, issues, and if automatic corrections are enabled, Slint changes them back to single quotes. Then, if Prettier runs again, it marks the single quotes as incorrect and changes them back to the double quotes. This creates a cycle where whichever tool is used last could override the changes made by the other, leading to war between the two formatters. A similar issue occurred with Stylint that we already discussed, so if you want to check it out, just check out this material. If you watch this, as you may recall, we didn't need to make any adjustments in the latest version because Stylint is no longer handling formatting rules. However, for Slint, while formatting rules are deprecated, they have not been removed yet. So to avoid conflicts between those two tools, we need to disable the rules that overlap with Prettier handles. We can do it by installing an additional Slint config. So this Slint package just turns off the Slint rules responsible for formatting. After installation, we only need to extend our default standard and add the Prettier ones. After this process, all the rules are not overlapping, so whichever tool is used, it formats the specific part of the codes. And we don't make the war between those two tools. Now it's a time for a few important informations. If you use this tool at least once, you might remember the .slint rc file used for adjusting the tool's behavior for your needs. What's interesting? It is deprecated now. The latest Gaslint introduces a significant change in the how configurations are handled. The traditional standard configuration has been deprecated in favor of the new default flat config. So be cautious when upgrading your package as not all configurations may transition smoothly. That's something that I've personally encountered. There's an outgoing GitHub issues tracking support with the new flat config. So before upgrading, check this issue to ensure that the tools you are using are compatible with the new version. If you are watching this close to the upload date, I have some bad news about standard JS coding style too. The Slint config standard package is not yet compliant with the new flat config, so it doesn't work as expected even though it's listed on the official documentations. There are some underlying issues with the standard JS project itself that needs to be handled before it can fully support the new configuration stack. Therefore, before you decide to upgrade or start using the latest version of Slint, please make sure that the coding
logging standards you plan to use are compatible with the new flat config. You can keep track on this issue or in the official GitHub issue. Since I still want to use the standard JS coding style, I've opted to install a previous version of the SLint that supports the older SLint RC configuration format. If you are interested in doing the same, you can follow the official instructions for the version 8. This way you can continue using it while waiting for updates on the compatibility. I've installed the tool using the following command which has been listed in the official do documentation and instead of using the new aslint.config.js file, I've used the previous one .aslintrc and configured aslint to meet my needs. So as you can see, I extend the semi-standard which is the same standard like standard JS but it uses the semicolons at the end of the lines and we also extend the pretty rules to reduce the conflicts between the, those tools. Then we add a few additional rules and, and that's all. I will keep an eye on the changes related to the standard JS compatibility and once there will be a new update I will create a new material detailing the process. If you want to stay informed about this development make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This way you will receive notifications as soon as a new content is available. And that's all for this material. It wasn't so long because I wanted to include only the most important informations for me. And if you want to do something more I insist you to check out the official docs because as I said not really once they are really great and they provide a lot of nice examples. So check it out and let me know what do you think. And thanks for staying with me. If you found this material helpful and want to keep our up to date with our latest content, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Giving us a thumbs up lets us you appreciate our work and helps more people find it. So thank you for everything, stay tuned and stay informed. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye bye.